Hi guys, it is another grim, gloomy, yuck day here in the end times in paradise in Garfield, Texas here on this gloomy Monday, February 26, 2018. So I have to go burn my burn pile, probably burn down my house and get thrown into prison. So that's what I'm up to today. But before I, before I go to prison and burn down my house, I want to uh, continue with my three-part economic meltdown roundup rant where uh, normally I go on the business pages to see how the global industrial economy, otherwise known as the New World Order, is pulling out all the stops to bring down this planet, but I never even made it as far as the business pages because just during the week, just off the regular headlines, I have pulled up 33 more examples of how uh, the global industrial economy is bringing down a planet. So I'm just dividing today's uh, three-part rant up into three 11 story segments. Uh, in part one, we were over there and let's see, we were over there in China, India, Australia, Sub-Saharan Africa. But this rant, we're simply going to come back to the good old United States of America. And of course, my lead-off story, my computer has eaten. But I kind of want, I might want to come back to a full rant if I can ever find the story again from this, uh, <clears throat> this group called The Future. The Future. Uh, we have the story, America, a military nation. Wow, this is... For those of you who do not realize it, America, we are a military nation. I, I know this is a huge newsflash to a lot of people on Humpty Dumpty Tribe, but uh, just in case you were not aware of it, the future, just like the present and the past, going back to at least uh, July 4th, 1776, uh, at least going back to then, America has been a military nation. We were founded in the middle of a war, and we will go down in the middle of a war. We were born in war, we have lived in war, and the American Empire will die in war. But anyway, if I can call this great piece of analysis up again, maybe I'll come back for a full rant. Anyway, but... What is going on in our military nation? Hmm. Clean up underway after Centurion pipeline oil spill in Oklahoma. A cleanup is underway after oil spilled into a pond from a pipeline that burst near a neighborhood in Yukon, Oklahoma early on Sunday. The Crude came from a pipeline owned by Centurion Pipeline, a subsidiary of Occidental Petroleum. We should say Accidental Petroleum Corporation. Accidental, or Centurion, said its personnel had responded to the incident and that the release had been contained. So unless you're some little creature just living in that pond. Okay, let's talk about good old Donald Trump, since most of this rant apparently is, uh, is about Donald Trump taking down this country and this planet. Let's just do our little uh, Trump taking down the planet economic roundup. <clears throat> Donald Trump's budget proposal includes major cuts to environmental programs. Trump's budget includes the elimination of or st 
steep cuts to several environmental programs. This is despite a deal made in Congress last week which added hundreds of billions of dollars in new general funding to the federal budget. So we have let's see, hundreds of billions of dollars more, you know, jacking up the deficit, what, $10 trillion, uh, but at the same time, cutting billions of dollars out of environmental programs. Let's look at some of the, the hit list here. The programs that could be cut are part of the Trump administration's strategy to refocus the Environmental Protection Agency. Yes, do you think so? Okay, let's see. What are some, some programs that could all be terminated? We have the Climate Change Research and Partnership. No shit, Sherlock. Indoor Air and Radon. The Marine Pollution and National Estuary Beaches and Environmental Education Program, all uh, on the chopping block. The budget for the EPA itself, Trump hopes to cut by close to 31%. somewhere between 31% or 34% of the otherwise known as $2.8 billion cut from the EPA. Uh, the president's budget proposes deep cuts to funding for cleaning up the country's most polluted sites and responding to environmental emergencies, oil spills, and natural disasters. Here is a 30% or a $762 million cut to the Hazardous Substance Superfund account. Let's see, what else do we have um, over there at the Department of Energy under Rick Perry? The Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy Budgets would be slashed and the Advanced Research Projects Agency is completely on the chopping block. Uh, let's see. Okay, of course all of this has to be approved by Congress. I mean, a lot of that's going to depend on how the midterm elections go. Okay, let's go over there. As long as we're there in Trump's budget, let's draw, connect some dots between Trump's budget and big oil. And this is also anyone wanting to invest in the stock market in the end times. You might get some hints here from this story. Trump's budget gives oil stocks an extra boost. Most oil wells only scratch the surface of their potential. The average well recovers only about 10% of the oil trapped. However, by using a variety of enhanced oil recovery techniques, companies can now boost the amount of oil extracted to as much as 60% of the original oil in place. Wow! As one would expect, these methods, picking the high-hanging fruit, add to the cost and the additional expense is getting harder to justify in an era of low oil prices. Wow. But the companies that employ one of the costlier techniques, which involves injecting carbon dioxide into the ground, into an oil reservoir 
to coax more oil out of the ground just got a shot in the arm. Yes. A provision of the latest U.S. budget will significantly boost a tax credit for injecting CO2 underground to produce more oil. <laughs> it, you know, this is why why I, this is how carbon capture and reduction really is going to work. It's going to be used to pump more oil out of the ground. So anyway, guys, they, uh, they go into this. And then, let's see, what are three oil stocks that will benefit the most? To help offset the additional cost of all of this technology, uh, you know, to get this, uh, this hard to reach oil, a tax credit of up to $10 per ton of CO2 injected into the ground has been available. Uh, and the new budget boosts that credit up to $35 per ton. This will help reduce costs for the top EOR producers in the country. Take a guess, the number one on here, accidental petroleum. Accidental Petroleum, which is the one, you know, who owns the pipeline pouring all of that oil into a pond. So we have, if you want to invest in the end times, Accidental Petroleum. Here is the gas pipeline uh, company and one of the largest oil producers in, ta in Texas would be Kinder Morgan which we've heard about, and here is Denberry Resources. And but that's not all, because then we have an associated story right next to that. Uh, if you're looking to make money in the end times, here is Cabot Oil and Gas Corporation gets boost from U.S. tax code changes. Uh, oil and gas companies are already seeing benefits from the lower tax rate, tax rate with Exxon Mobil among those reporting huge support. And of course, U.S. shale oil and gas company Cabot has seen a multi-million dollar benefit from changes made to the U.S. tax code by uh, Donald Trump. Uh, there you go. Uh, thank you, Donald Trump. Uh, anyway, guys, I can go on with this. I think we get it. See if you can connect the dots. How long have you been in this rabbit hole? Can you connect the dots from those stories to this one? U.S. Interior Agency speeds up process to lease oil and gas on federal public lands. This is Reuters News explaining this to us. The U.S. Department of the Interior this week quietly removed Obama-era reforms to the leasing of federal land for oil and gas drilling in a move to, quote, simplify and streamline, close quote, the process. Yes. Uh, the memo effectively erases any reforms implemented by the Obama administration aimed at including input from environmentalist and local tourist industry groups in the process of leasing federal land for drilling, which the oil and gas company industry complained was time-consuming and redundant. So this is quoting the internal memo from the Department of the Interior. 
Quote, this instructional memorandum aims to simplify and streamline the leasing process for more efficient and effective oil and gas man management. The memo added that policy changes would result in, quote, additional revenue from increased lease sales, close quote, and reduced cost for environmental reviews and responses to environmental protests. The new policy would limit the environmental review of specific sales to six months, blah, blah, blah. This is not a culver senior counsel at the Wilderness Society. Quote, the clear direction is to issue as many leases as possible as quickly as possible without considering resource conflicts or the desires of local communities. Okay, let's go over there to uh, EPA again. Trump's climate denying coal lobbyist nominee inches closer to EPA's number two job. Oh, shit, yes. Uh, this is Andrew Wheeler, Trump's nominee to the EPA deputy administrator. Uh, unlike other Trump nominees whose outrageous opinions, you know, he's a major climate change denier, or lack of qualifications puts them on the political fringe, Wheeler boasts both the beltway aesthetic and the experience needed to become a powerful EPA operator. Yeah, he's a coal lobbyist. Uh, his confirmation critic sphere will speed the Trump administration's rollback of environmental and public health protections. Yes. This is Marianne Hitt of the Sierra Club Quote, talking about Wheeler's confirmation, it is very alarming and distressing. Wheeler is right up there with the list of the most extreme people that Trump has nominated for any agency. Oh, shit, yes. Uh. Okay, from the EPA, let's just go to the Gulf of Mexico. Environmental groups sue Trump administration for allowing oil and gas companies to dump their waste into the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, shit, Sherlock. These, uh, Porpoise huggers say that the permits to dump fracking and drilling waste into the Gulf of Mexico do not take into account potential dangers to water quality. The three groups uh, filed their suit uh, Tuesday against the EPA saying the federal agency's decision could have devastating effects on marine, wildlife, and habitats. I mentioned this story on Friday. This is Kristen Monsell from the Center for Biological Diversity. Quote, the Trump administration is letting oil companies dump their, ta their toxic fracking chemicals into the Gulf of Mexico with no regard for the risks or the law. Wow, that's just unacceptable. 
The EPA is supposed to protect water quality, not give oil companies free reign to use our oceans as their garbage disposal. But I guess we have a little tiny ray of good news. U.S. court blocks Trump administration from ending the oil and gas waste rule. A U.S. court has temporarily blocked the Trump administration from delaying or ending an Obama era rule aimed at preventing oil and gas leaks during productions. Uh, during production, marking the fourth time either Congress or the courts have upheld the rules implementation. Um, anyway, we will see. Uh, this is a uh, th this is a temporary uh, win for for the eco Nazis. But you better believe uh, it's uh, this is not going. Anybody, anybody who thinks this little victory at this court level uh, is going to change a goddamn thing. But you know, get out there and keep fighting. All right. Take a, this could be they could be talking about uh, about several agencies. Turmoil shakes up agency in charge of vast U.S. lands. A year of upheaval at the U.S. Interior Department has seen dozens of senior staff members reassigned and key leadership positions left unfilled. Rules considered burdensome to industry shelved and a sweeping reorganization proposed for its 70,000 employees. The evolving status quo at the Interior Department responsible for more than 780,000 square miles of America's public lands has led to to praise huh to praise from energy and mining companies and republicans who welcomed the p departure from perceived heavy-handed regulation under President Barack Obama, but the changes have drawn increasingly sharp criticism from conservationists, Democrats, and some agency employer employees. Under Donald Trump, critics say Interior Secretary and Ryan Zinke has curbed outside input into how public land is used is used and has elevated corporate interest above the duty to safeguard treasured sites. Yes, the differing views illustrate long-standing tensions over the role of America's public lands, an amalgam of pristine wilderness recreational playgrounds and abundant uh, energy reserves. A year into his tenure, Zinke has emerged as the point man for the administration's goal of American energy dominance. He has targeted regulations perceived to hamper development of oil, natural gas, and coal beneath our public lands. And one more, I just have to do one more stock tip for the end times as U.S. News and World Report looking at the pros and cons for investing 
in Boeing Corporation. Yes, Boeing Corporation is on an upswing as a perfect storm of trends, including strong aircraft demand, a cash boost from the recent tax reform, and a potential benefit from increased defense spending are all working in favor of the Chicago-based aviation giant. There you go. Boeing Corporation. Uh, anybody who wants to make money in the end times needs to look no further than Boeing Corporation. But I'm going to come back at you with just a flotsam and jetsam of, of economic stories in one minute for part two. Bye, guys. We got one more rant, little dog. One more rant, and then you can go get swirlies.